everybody. Welcome to the Studying Brew, episode 706. Whoa, 706. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to do when we're going to get to 1,000. All I know is we're going to have a lot of passers by then. So uh, it's good to see all of you on here for the 706th episode for uh, of the Studying Brew. It is Test Taking Techniques Tuesday. That's right. We give you those skills that pays the bills, those techniques that help you get a pass. And we're so happy to have all of you on here. Yeah. I wish there was a rhyme for technique. You know how we say the skills to pay the bills. Yeah, I know. Techniques to techniques. <laughs> Random thoughts. ADD, everybody. <laughs> all right. So like I was saying, my name is Andy. I'm the guy that answers all the text messages, all the phone calls, all that great stuff. But you're not here for my my social media and secretarial skills. No, you're here for Brandy because she's got her Series 6, 63, 26, Series 65, and that Series 7 that is more than qualified to teach you all the things you need to know. And not only that, she will have random thoughts just like you just seen there. And it just proves that anybody with ADD can still get this thing done. Fun thoughts. There you go. See, I can't even focus. See, neither can she. Can't even get through the beginning without having a random thought. That's just saying. That's legit the biggest F word in my house. Focus. Focus. <laughs> it's a true story. It's the struggle's real. The struggle is real, everybody. Legit. And uh yeah, and, and you know, we were we were talking about it earlier and, and that is the one thing that a lot of people uh that, that struggle. Uh I was talking to one of our members earlier today and they were like, you know, I hear you say it all the time, like get up and like pace around. Yeah. Study. Yeah. You guys give all these great study tips on like, you know, study, you know, by pacing, you know, watch the videos or do your audios or whatever, read, do your quizzes, mm -hmm. you know, walk around the apartment, walk around the, the house, you know, don't, don't sit there. If you have a hard time, you know, focusing or staying awake while you're going through this material, stand, pace. It's hard. It's hard to fall asleep while you're pacing. I know that some of you probably could do it, but you know, it's, a, it's a, the difficulty level is a little higher and uh, less likely. yeah, less likely. But I'll tell you what, it's a, it, it'll get you through it, but it's a lot better than someone who puts on their PJs. Yeah. If you're studying with your PJs on, you're telling your brain you're ready to go to sleep. If you're studying in your bed and you're just hanging out on your bed, just like, you know, reading this stuff, uh, one, you should never put it over your head while you're reading this stuff because that is dangerous. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you know that iPad or book is going to smack you in your forehead because you will go to sleep. And it hurts. And it hurts. Mm -hmm. um, it's just sending all the wrong messages to your, your brain. Don't go. Don't look. It's I know I'm going to sound I'm going to sound like an old person right now. I'm going to sound like, you know, some of you all might call me a boomer, even though I'm not. I'm Generation I'm, X, I'm boomer. not a boomer. I don't meet the qualifications, but I will say this. I don't know where it got popular to wear your pajamas outside of like, I don't know going to bed I'm, with you on that. I'm like why are we at the gym with with pajamas on why are we going to the office in pajamas why are we grocery shopping in pajamas i will never forget when we first joined our firm primerica and we did an interview and the guy came in in a track suit brandy was appalled she's like in a in a track suit no less <laughs> i'm like i don't think the track suit as bad well, no, but I mean, for an interview, but yeah, what's up with the jammies? <laughs> what's up with jammies outside? I don't know. But in your studying, I know you're home. I know you're you're in your relaxed zone, right? Mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with wearing pajamas around your house. So, I mean, that's where you should wear them. Yes. But if you're trying to get down to like studying and trying to stay awake and trying to like put your brain into that study mode, mm -hmm. don't put your pajamas on. All your PJs are saying is it's time to go Mimi's. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to go Mimi's right away. It's, it's just going to happen. So stay uncomfortable. Stay in an attire that makes you feel like, you know, I still got to get up and go take a shower after this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I still got to get ready for bed. Right. Then you relax. You celebrate with relaxing and putting on the pajamas and going to bed and have those sweet dreams of past notices. Yeah. That's when it's time. That's my helpful study hint for tonight. If anything, I know the other part just makes some people mad. They're like, dude, I love wearing my Crocs and pajamas in public. It's not my generation. I don't know what to say. I I, no judgment, but I'm just saying. I had a post about the Crocs. Really weird. Really weird. I'm like, dude, why are you in pajamas? <laughs> Even the onesies. The onesies confuse me. I'm like, you're in a onesie. I own one. I know you own one, but like in public, do you wear it? No. No, I don't. Yeah. 
Grogu, in case you were wondering. All right. Anyways, ready? Let's do this thing, Brandy. Before I before I make other people mad, they're like, "Dude, I love going to the store in my pajamas and my onesie. <laughs> I love my my Pikachu outfit. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm ready to play." All right. We have our own on course, online, on demand uh, uh, classes that you can do anytime, anywhere. So that way, in the morning, get up real early and just get it done. Get out late at night, guys. I cannot say it enough. If you got a busy schedule, make it happen early in the day. Get it over with. Get it done. Yes. Make it happen. Sacrifice those couple hours of sleep. Uh, as one of our pastors used to say, her name's Nellie. She used to say this all the time. Hey, sacrifice sleep, not greatness. Yeah. Sacrifice sleep, not greatness. Do it for a short time. Yeah. You shouldn't be studying for a long time. Do it for a short time. Get serious about it. Do it. Knock it out. And get back to your memes. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get back to those old days when you put the pajamas on and went to bed. You know? Yes. So, uh, yeah, we got all that, including live sessions where Brandy goes over those uh, those uh, those those techniques and it shows you how to apply the information that you just learned. It's not good enough to just learn content. You got to learn how to apply it. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to apply this stuff. We do that in those live sessions. We have study guides available for the SIE, the 663. They're $20 each. They're ebooks. You can print them out. You have them. They go right great with our membership stuff, but you don't also have to have that for, for them to work. We've had people that just use our studying brew and our study guides, and they've, they've gotten past notices. Yep. So it's really about your will, want, and desire, and plus your self-discipline and consistency that gets it really done. Uh, but it'll help you out. So you can go ahead and use that. Orientation replay explains everything we do, paid and free. Tone of community, that is our Discord. We'll do that tomorrow night for sure. We're going to show you where how that works great but that is our community of studiers that's where people can ask questions so if you want to know how the attempts work if you just didn't pass your sie and you want to know how that works that's a great community to get on there and you can get help with that and we have all those licenses uh, all those resources over there to help you out and those reviews of the studying brew over there you can get free studying brew replays over there uh it's just where all the cool kids are hanging out that's follow me on telegram and uh, how do you get to all this stuff scan the QR code or hit the link in the chat for our link tree. It has all that information. Plus it has my phone number 866-ACONA 866-439-5662. That's where you can reach me at. Leave me a voicemail or a text and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Brandy is over on the discord. So someone did call me apparently and I didn't answer because I was e e one. Oh, he was really busy today. Yeah, I was super busy. One, I'm either in a meeting if I don't answer. Two, I'm probably in a bathroom. I won't answer. I'm just not a bathroom answerer, sorry. Uh, so you need to leave a voicemail and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done. Yes. Yeah. It's usually the only two reasons, really. If I'm in a meeting, much. on a phone call, or I'm in the bathroom, I'm not answering. I just feel like <laughs> those are two unanswerable. I, I respect them. I, I, uh, yeah, I think everybody should be able to respect those, those three excuses, right? Yeah. But leave me a voicemail. And if you don't leave me a voicemail or a text on that, I'm assuming you're a robocaller. I ain't calling you back. True. If it's not enough for you to leave me a voicemail or a text, you know, then it wasn't probably important or you maybe you got the wrong number. Yeah. I don't know. So give me a text, you know, leave me a text or just shoot me a voicemail and say, hey, can you call me back? You know, I'm interested. So I have a way to get to get to you. Right. And by the way, if I don't answer my phone call, text me because I might be able to answer it. Whereas I probably can't take a phone call at the moment. Right. You know, in those situations where you have you can't actually be on the phone, but you can text. Yeah. So just please do that, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I really do like to, to talk to you guys if you do he does. Uh, text or call. So, yes. All right. Live session's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing something a little different. Normally for the Series 26, we have um, we have the, the Your Question Wednesday, but tomorrow we're going to do some content. We're going to do heightened supervision. So it's supervision that's been at an upper level, I guess. It's heightened. It's on platforms. It means you're it's in high heels. It means that your representative is a bad person. Yeah. Heightened, heightened security. Yeah, pretty much. So not on high heels. No, oh, okay. not platforms. All right, got it. Yeah. So there you go. We're going to go over that tomorrow at 26, 7 a.m. in Hawaii, 10 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. in the East. And then right after that, like Batman and Robin, we're going to go Series 65 and we are going to go over business information. And that is at 8 a.m. in Hawaii, 11 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Mountain, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. in the East. And that is two hours long. All members have access and remember to look in your email from Patreon and you have access to all that as it is the member 
Zoom code. Yes. All right. Uh, this is just a quick update and reminder. In June, June, we are making some dis we are making some changes around here. We normally have on Tuesdays we have the series six. Yeah. At four p.m. Yeah. And Thursdays we have it uh, the SIE at that 4 p.m. time Pacific Standard, right? We have those later ones. Yeah. Uh, in June, we will not. No. We will not have those later ones, right? Correct. Uh, so, but what we're doing is, uh, as Brandy, would you like to, to say where you moved them all to? Yeah, so I moved the, here, I'm gonna get a brighter color here. I moved the um, Tuesday Series 6 to Monday at 2 p.m. So that's a new date and time. And then I moved Thursday's SIE to a new time just two hours earlier. We'll have like the all of the different time zones when we get closer to June. So this is just kind of like a two hours early on Thursday and then a new day and time on Monday for the Series 6. Yeah. So we're just kind of shifting things around so we're not on at 4 p.m. Yes. One of the things we noticed going through this now that we've been doing this for a while, during the summer, those later times just don't work. Uh, so they just don't like not the attendance goes really far down because people, you know, it's still light outside and people are doing stuff. Right. That, and if you're in the hotter states, like in the, the West, that's when it's time to like go outside because earlier you just melt to the ground. You know what I mean? You go outside and you, you just start melting. So people like to go outside around four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock when the temperatures kind of dip a little. Right. So it's, it's a lot harder for people to be indoors or doing that thing. Uh, or they want to go meet with their clients, whatever. So we're moving it a little two hours earlier. That's all. Yeah. Uh, and then these are all members. Uh, these are member sessions, by the way. Yes. So you got to be a member to be in there. And if you're taking the SIE right now and you're like, oh, I don't like that time. Guess what? You got three weeks to pass. That's right. Then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Problem solved. There you go. Problem solved. Move on to the Series 6. Yeah. That's my answer to that. And if you're in the Series 6, guess what? Pass. Move on to the Series 63. Problem solved. Plus, there's actually, and we work with a lot of different firms. Um, some firms, this is a very independent study. Some firms, this is part of their probation. Yes. And so they show up to work and their only jobs are to study. So that's the other reason why we shifted some of these during the business hours. Because they actually get paid to go yeah. to these sessions. So yeah. 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 Uh, it works out better. And it also works out better in the fact that there's not a lot of people that usually attend those. And the East Coast loves it because it's not it's not so late, right? right. It's a little right. earlier for them even. Right. So it works out better for everyone. All right, let's go. Let's do it. If you're not uh, following me on Instagram, well, it wouldn't matter because I just got the notice on this one. <laughs> but uh, tomorrow I will definitely post this up. But if, yes. when they give me a picture and they let me know, yeah, I add another one to the Kono Hall of Fame like I will tomorrow because you know why, Brandy? Why? We got a passer. We got a passer. We go to pass art. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you guys know, we have high school kids in this house that are asleep or trying to go to sleep at this time. And I don't care. I yell it anyway. It's true. They don't, I don't care. I'm like, whatever. We, we, were, we were out somewhere today when Andy found out. Yeah. And I, you, I yell it in a, I'll, I yell it in a restaurant to so, see, you know, I'm like yelling it. We go to pass art. Very excited. I'm in, I'm in the strangest places in a mall. I'm like, we got to pass art. Yeah. Like people are just like, what is going on over there? Yeah, I don't care. I'm yeah. excited. Fun. I'm I'm partying with you guys. That's right. And today we got a great passer. We have a passer from the NYC. That's right. All the way out in New York. Well, actually, I don't know for sure in the NYC, but I wore my Brooklyn hat to represent where I'm where our passer is from in New York, right? That's At least right. the state. Yeah. Congratulations to Lavelle on passing the SIE. Just the sweetest person of all. Left a lot of great messages that I will put in the Instagram post tomorrow. And I could go on and on about this, but to be honest with you, it is my first time meeting uh, Lavelle for the first time in face to face, as far as I remember, anyway. And uh, I'm just excited to have her on here as I look for her to be on. She's she's there. I know she's there, but I can't find her to put her in there. Um. Oh, sorry guys. So on Instagram, she just sent me a message. I'm trying to log log back in. My internet just went out. That's the devil. It is the devil. It always works harder. Uh, so hopefully I get her on tomorrow night and the internet's back on. So, yeah. but I just want to say that she was definitely uh, uh, really grateful for uh, passing. She had two messages. One was to us. Uh, she says we're very selfless and dedicated. 
consistent bosses. Thanks, Lavelle. And wants us to keep shining like diamonds. Uh, but for everybody else, she said, being consistent. Big letters, being consistent. Yes. Hopping on the late night brews, reading answers first, going in for the fourth time with a positive mental attitude, having you and Andy in my head saying it's just a test. The right answer is there. That was the key things that she wanted to let you guys all know. I love it. And that's it. That's it. Uh, I know there's more to it, but I don't want to ruin it. And it, so the, if I'll reach out to her and I'll say, you know, maybe we'll have her on later, but we'll, we'll try tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Uh, all the way out from New York. Congratulations, Lavelle, on passing the SIE. We salute you. That's right. All right. Let's go to Test Taking Techniques Tuesday. Cool. Congratulations. And hopefully we get to hear from her again. That's a bummer, right? But the devil always works against you when you're about ready to have the blessings, right? It's true. So it's a, it's a good thing. Yes. All right, Test Taking Techniques Tuesday. Guys, this is the skills that pays the bills. If you just heard Lavelle say or wrote or me say it, actually, <laughs> through Lavelle, yeah. uh, read answers first. We This is where it comes from. This is how we do those techniques, those strategies on how to approach these exam questions. You can't be going at these exam questions and these exams like you're still 11 years old in sixth grade. No. No, no. I have a good technique and a good strategy to apply to these professional exams. It'll help you get these things done. And we show you those, some of those uh, techniques right now, but we got rules to test taking techniques Tuesday. One, rule number one, we got to keep that positive mental attitude. And how do we do that? You need to stop thinking about what exam did that question come from? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The difficulty of the question is not what you should be paying attention to. What you should be paying attention to is what is Brandy writing? What is she looking at? What's her method? Why does she point out patterns? What's all this stuff with the Mona? What's all this stuff with all these different lingo that they got? Hey, what's that word she connected? Ooh, that looks easy, right? Yeah. That's the stuff you should pay attention to, which brings to rule number two. How do we get good at anything? We practice. So right after we're done here, you're going to go grab yourself a 10 question flash quiz. That means 10 questions, right? 10 yep. minutes, one minute of thought just going to knock them out with the techniques and you might not do so well because it's your first time trying it, but that's how you get good. Wow. You, can you imagine if Kobe Bryant stopped shooting three pointers? Cause he missed a couple in the beginning when he was learning. Eh. That ain't the way to do it. Nope. Nah, you got to keep going at it. You got to keep working that jump shot. You got to keep working those quizzes. That's you right. got to keep making sure that you go after it and learn those techniques. So skill sets. So that way you can knock these things out of the park. So you're going to not do a 10 question. 10 minute quiz, flash quiz, if you will. And that's it, right? Gosh. In any section, area, wherever you're at, whatever Q bank. Yep. Let's go, Brandy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, it's me. All right, guys. Answers first, right? Uh, I learned this word, ingots. I forgot where I learned it, but ingots <laughs> of gold of only a certain size. Oh, in um, a game. You yes. Collect ingots. Uh, B, uh, gold in various forms, including sheets, wires, and ingots. I mean, like ingots. Uh, Barrick Gold Corporation common stock, and then box ca box cars. By the way, box car of gold ore. So if I look, we're obviously talking about gold. Um, but this one is talking about gold corporation stock. It's the only one that's talking about stock. Now let me ask a question. This is a securities test, am I right? It is. Why would I care about the other three? I don't know. So that's the answer. Oh, wait, question. So your customer has heard about precious metal funds. So that's keyword right there, funds. He asks about types and amounts of various precious metals these funds might own. You tell him he has mistaken the focus of these funds. A gold fund, for example, might own the stock, yo. The fund doesn't own the gold. They own corporations that have gold something. Not just gold in the name, but they do something with gold. <laughs> <laughs> gold something. <laughs> Solid breakdown. You like that? All right. Must include the name of the broker dealer placing the advertisement. Must. Must mention the name of the investment being advertised. Must. Hmm, wait, these two both have must. We don't usually like must. No. But there is two that have much. We talk about Mona. That's right. May describe performance as long as it is made clear that past results are no assurance of the future. That's fine. We could do that. Hey, man, this happened in the past, but that doesn't mean that that's going to happen in the future. We could do that. Right. And then last is filed with FINRA. That's like basic. So if I'm looking at this, 
C sounds good. D sounds good. Now I'm torn between A and B. The two musts, right? So it says must have the name of the broker dealer or must have the name of the investment. Now that's another thing, guys. Yeah, I know we usually cross off the must right away, but they start the same. They're talking about including the name of something. Okay, so I know that the answer is one of those two. These are the opposite ones. So let's look at what we're asking. We are asking the question, if I could erase. Oh, that's a really short question. A generic advertisement. It's generic. Mm. So how, if it's generic, I can't include the name of the investment. It's generic. I'm not including the name. It's generic. I'm not including the name. So it's like the off. Well, I mean, this is like goes out to all the old timers on here. But remember the brown label? Yeah. Where you, we used to go to the grocery store and there literally was a brown label product on the shelves. And like you went to go pick up the beer and it literally would say beer on it. <laughs> and it would be in a brown can. Yeah. It like no other information. And then you go down the chip aisle and there would actually be a brown labeled potato chip and it would say potato chip on it. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. No, no branding. No, nothing. Just that's what it is. Yeah. That's how I think of that brown label. Right. Yep. Generic. Yeah. It's very generic. All right. Cool. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I got unrealized capital gains. I got interest distributions. I got reinvested dividends and I got capital gain distributions. So if you guys look, I've got distributions, distributions, reinvested, but I have this little fancy word hanging out here, unrealized. It's unrealized. It means it's just kind of hanging out, right? Yep. All right. Mutual fund shareholders are not, oops, sorry, are not taxed on the one that's unrealized. The one that's unrealized. I know some people, I, I'm trying not to do content tonight, but I know some people are like, well, but reinvested, I don't see that. It gets reinvested. Um, mm. It's still distributed to you. Whereas unrealized, guys, can you imagine if we got taxed every time something appreciated? If something appreciated and we got taxed on that, just for the heck of it, hey, uh, so I saw that this was uh, has a higher value than it did yesterday. I'm going to tax you on that. Do you know what unrealized capital gains is to me? Hmm. You know how some of us, we sit there and we we like sit back in our office chair and we think about the Bugatti that we don't have, right? We mm -hmm. think about the mansion that we don't have yet, right? Right. We've, we're, we're looking, we're going through our, our, our dream board. We're sitting there <laughs> looking at us in the wall, right? Mm -hmm. That's some unrealized capital gains right there. You can't tax me on that. These are my dreams. I haven't even realized these yet. These are unrealized capital gains. That's how I look at that. It's a dream board. It's a dream board. Yeah. I, how can you tax me on something that's not realized? I like that. You can use that from now on. Unrealized. Interest is always taxable, right? Uh, well, no, because it's always. Dun, dun, dun. Um, remember, it's uh, interest is not tax in a meaning. Interest is not taxed in a muni. And it's not taxed in a Roth IRA either. See, so not always. There you go. Like that. The more you know. Right. Speaking of munis, the U.S. government, cities, counties, states. Why was I able to say that? Because this is a muni because it's a local government, right? Mm hmm. Uh, county is a local government, also slash muni. And state is a local government. But the U.S. government. Ooh, federal? This is federal. It's not local. Washington, D.C. Unless you happen to live in Washington, D.C. The district? Then it would be local. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's no. <laughs> it's still federal. It's still federal. Which of the following entities does not issue municipal bonds? How about the one that's not a municipality? good i think so all right that was easy that was either. i got a customer's marital status i have a customer's income i've got a customer's favorite pastime Ooh, do they like stamp collecting you never know and i got a customer's risk tolerance by the way would we have to like i mean i guess it would be fun to know if their favorite pastime was something that 
was really expensive or dangerous or dangerous yeah hmm. hot air ballooning you never know scuba diving you never know but the only one that has a number associated with it is income this is the one that's different even though i like you guys are all answering c yeah they're all they're all lit. wait but i will Brandy. say this what I, i've never i i i will say this i have never seen this on a uh, scene on a like info collection list what's your favorite job, pastime do you guys remember those back in teen magazines like back in the day tiger beat tiger beat no i was a dude i didn't read tiger beat bop magazine i wasn't looking for the latest tiger beat so i can have eddie furlong on my wall wow you met eddie furlong yeah i had to go wow I, who had, I struck a chord who had any i don't know <laughs> jordan knight bro all right which of the following is a financial consideration now i might argue this one because no i'm just kidding guys it's the one that's the number <laughs> you never know with that financial with that favorite pastime it could be a financial. But like what's a financial <laughs> consideration other than income Really, in all seriousness, guys, a financial consideration is one that you can, they call it quantify, but it one, it's one that has the numbers in it. It's the factual numbers. So there's just another one. Right. D would not be because there's no numbers in it. This would be considered non-financial. It is information that you collect on your client, but it is considered non-financial. So is marital status. But there's lots of risk tolerances you can do with it have no numbers in it too. That's what I'm saying. It's non-financial. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Uh, risk tolerance is I'm conservative, I'm moderate or aggressive. We don't really put numbers on that. It's kind of like your attitude about things, like your mood ring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say it. I saw a meme today, but I'll leave it. I'll let it, I'll let it go. I'll save it for the after. All right. Uh, a report created and sent to the firm's institutional customers only. Guys, can I, can I just say that this is the one I picked? <laughs> I didn't even read this question. <laughs> <laughs> Legit, guys, I didn't read this question. I just saw the only. I clicked on A and it was the answer. <laughs> Brandy. I answered this question in a second. How are you going to get Legit. confused by the question and force yourself to pick the wrong answer if you don't read the question? I mean, the way I looked at it was, okay, it's the only one that has only. The answer says, the question says not. I'm just going to go for it. And it was the answer, right? So I really didn't. So in all seriousness, I didn't even notice what the question was about. You didn't even read all the answers, did you? I, I didn't. I didn't even know this was about <laughs> retail communication. <laughs> but guys, it what, about all, but what about Mona? So you're right, because we say Mona is usually not true, right? That, uh -huh. That's what we say. That, what are we looking for in the answer there? We're looking for the not. There's your answer about Mona. See, there you go. There you go. We were looking for that not true. Right. And Mona's there. And and guys, that's what we mean by like, like some people ask me like, how many 10 question quizzes can I, should I do a day? It, it really just depends on your time, to be honest with you. But guys, I, I did this in a second. Like a 10 question quiz should not take you more than 10 minutes. And also we call it a flash quiz here, but in seriousness, like 10, 15 minutes max on a 10 question quiz. Don't spend any more time than that. Do this. It's the only one that said only. The question said not. Click on it. Bet you you're going to be right. And if you're not, the amount of times that you're not right based purely on a technique is so small. And then you learn it later. You go, what's not retail communication? Oh, it went to institutional customers. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. It's not retail. There you go. It went to institutional. Okay, that's that. Try it. Try it. Love it. Stop trying to make it more difficult than it is stop trying to look at the questions so that way you get confused and pick the wrong answer because that's what you like to do yes stop just doing that pick it. how many of you saw that and you're like oh that was way easy yeah Randy, you make it so easy why can't i do that you can do that you got to go practice it though you really? got to practice it right remember what i said about kobe and his three-point shot yep right yep Remember, everybody said he couldn't do it. And then there was this game. He literally, that's all he shot just to prove a point. And he scored like, I don't know, some enormous number. It was like 60 in a game just because all really three high. point shots. It was really high. <laughs> yeah, it was something like, I don't know. It wasn't 60. I don't remember the 60, but I think it was like 15 three pointers he shot in one game. I know he was running a bunch of 40s and 50s per game. Yeah, but the but he in one game, he did like 14 of them because someone yeah. said he couldn't shoot from the three point line. So he had to make a point. You, you got to make a point. Free your mind. You got to make a point out there. Yeah. Go get to practicing. Get this thing done, guys. 
Don't give up on yourself. Never quit. No matter how hard it gets, it's going to be challenging. Quit, quit, quit being so hard on yourself. Have some grace on it and learn and know that this is a learning process and everybody learns sometimes at a different process. But what you can do is your actions. Be consistent and put your time in. Yes. Start learning who you are as a studier. Yes. Some people are verbal. Some people are, are you know, auditory. Some people are visual. Some people uh, need to do things like a kinesthetic, like working on, you know, doing the, you know, quizzes over and over again. They, they're not that, or they need to walk around and pace. They can't yes. sit there. Mm-hmm. Learn how you are. And it makes it a lot easier. Yes. There's no correct way. There's only one way, your way. Yep. Right? That's we just true. give you all the different ways that you can apply it. That's true. But the main thing is all up to you and to stay consistent and get after it. With that, everybody, we have live sessions tomorrow. We've got uh, Discord Wednesday for the Studying Brew. Yep. Invite a friend, post us up, let everybody know we do for free. And stay safe out there and wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your friend's face. That's all I know. And keep that positive mental attitude. PMA, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for being on. We super appreciate you. Don't forget to take that quick quiz before you go to sleep tonight. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great one. Mahalo.